Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. Feels like it's been a while. International break, it's been, it's gone. Good riddance. For me, it's the worst time of the year, international break. You know, these random games. Um, Australia, we played. Italy, no interest in them anymore. Gave my tickets away for the England game. Not really feeling it. Um, obviously, going into the international break on the back of a defeat to Arsenal is not the best. Um, we've had a couple of weeks to digest it. Uh, the good news is Rodri is back. He's played for Spain. He's looking good. He's back in the squad. And yeah, we bounce back. Brighton at home, Saturday, three o'clock. Um, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Obviously, when you've been beat, you, you want to get straight back on the horse and, 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 and go again. We didn't have an opportunity to do that. We've had to sort of stew on it. We've had to listen to the obvious ramblings from North London. The, you know, they're going to win the league, all that nonsense we've had to deal with. You know, then they're coming at me online. Steve, why are you talking about Arsenal fans and that? Because, listen, we beat you 12 out of the last 13 games and we didn't carry on going on about it. It is what it is. Arsenal's just another game for us. I get we're the best team in the world and I get you haven't beat us for a while. I get that. So I understand why they get a bit excited. But the nonsense they were coming out with about winning the league and all that after eight games, that's why I put the, the, the YouTube short on. When they said to me I was making it up, I put the short on of the interviews outside the Emirates where they were saying we're going to win the league. And they're saying, well, we are allowed to celebrate. Of course you are. You won the league. You won the game, but you didn't win the league. So celebrate like you won the game. You know, come out there and say, this is a massive step. We beat Man City for the first time in, in, in 13 games. Um, if we're going to win this league, we need to beat Man City. That's the way to say it. But some of the things I've been seeing, the slander on Erling Haaland, the slander on on on, on our on our team. Um, you know, last season the same thing happened. It came back to bite you on the arse. So, you know, be careful what you wish for. So, yeah, getting beat off that lot before an international break is not ideal. Uh, just let me have a bit of the old brew. It's freezing today. It's not ideal. Uh, so we get a chance to put it right. We've realised now how important Rodri is to the Manchester City setup. We realise now that these players in the background that can't step up to that level. Um, the last three games we've lost, it's been the final third for me. I just don't think there's anything in that final third to scare anyone. You know, they're going about Saliba and Gabriel pocketing Haaland. Well, Dawson and Kilman did it the week before, so... You know, it's nothing special at the minute. If, you, if you've got the best striker in the world up front and there's no service, then it's pretty easy to handle if there's nothing coming to him. You've just got to basically stand with him. He never got the ball. You never get any crosses in the box to get, at, you know, the end on it, his head on it or whatever. But, you know, it's frustrating. I just hope that Pep realises that, A, you're trying to squeeze Alvarez in this team. I get it. But if you're squeezing Alvarez in the position he's in now, it affects Erling because, you know, there's nothing coming to him at all. The creativity in the midfield is non-existent. I do believe Kyle Walker playing on the right, if he's got nobody playing in front of him, then there's no point. You know what I mean? Defensively, he's sound, the pace and all that, getting caught out in transitions. Kyle Walker's the best in the world. But last season when we started to play, John Stones was at right back. Akanji was at right back. You know, these are the things we've got to think about. Saturday, Brighton, for me, go back to basics. My team would be Edison in net. I'd go with Guardiola at left back, Diaz, Akanje, Stones at right back. I'd go for Rodri, Bernardo, Nunes in the middle, yeah? So I'd have Rodri doing what he does. I'd have Nunes and Bernardo alongside him for the energy. I think that's got that's a good midfield. I'd go for Grealish on the left. I'd go for Foden on the right. And I'd go for Haaland up front. And at every opportunity, I'd be telling Jack Grealish to go at the fullback and get crosses in the box. Same with Foden. Go at the fullback, get crosses in the box. 
not what we've been doing all season, keeping the ball, knocking it around, keeping the ball, frustrated, frustrated. Let's be a little more direct. Late in the game, you know what I mean? Hopefully we're winning. Late in the game, Jeremy Doku on, same thing. Get to that byline, get them crosses in, be a bit more direct. If anyone thinks Brighton is going to be easy, it's not going to be easy. The last run of results for Brighton have not been good. I think they got beat off Chelsea in the uh, the Carabao Cup. They drew 2-2 with Marseille. They got beat 6-1 off Villa. And then they drew 2-2 with Liverpool. The Zerbe got them playing good football. I actually enjoy watching Brighton play football when they're on it. But the thing is with them, you don't know what Brighton's going to turn up. One minute they're turning up playing people off the park and you think, some team. Next minute they're getting it for six at Villa. So we've just got to make sure we keep one eye on that. I think Brighton will feel that City is a bit of a wounded animal after the last few results and they can get at us. I like to think that that might play into our hands. If they come to the Etihad and try and play football against us and go toe-to-toe, I believe we might get at them uh, in in a big way. So that's what I'm hoping for. Um, Erling Haaland, the slander online. You know, are people really that stupid? Somebody messaged me and said he's a one-season wonder. Well, one-season wonders don't break Premier League goal-scoring records. One-season wonders don't win trebles, don't win the European Cup, don't outscore everybody in Europe. One-season wonders don't score 61 in 62 games, 27 in 28 for Norway. You know, come on, people. Let's lay off this narrative now that if someone goes three games, he's finished. Because he's still got eight goals. He's still leading scorer in the Prem, but apparently he's finished. But we should know that last season we had all this nonsense. He chose the wrong team. He's not He's not right for Manchester City, etc., etc. And we had the best season we've ever had in our history. So we as City fans know about Big Earl and what he's about. Pep Guardiola knows about Earl and what he's about. And at the minute, Pep probably would admit when he's with his... Uh, tactical analysis team and that, that there's not enough going on in the final third to get the best out of Erling Haaland. That is basically it. So Pep's got to get it right. You know, Pep's got to get it right. We trust him. There was a few early in the international break uh, that said Pep Guardiola, Guardiola needs to leave. I mean, some of these are just kids. I get it online, but I thought as a fan base, we had a bit more sense about us than that. We can't be as reactionary as that. I do like to think anyone that sees that online, call it out, get a grip of them. There's one or two I've messaged, but, they're, they're, you know, they don't understand. It does it does us no good talking like that. You know what I mean? It's nonsense. It, these people wouldn't survived in the 90s watching Manchester City if they're having meltdowns after this. This is the, the best football we've we've ever seen in our lives. I don't care if we lose 10 on the bounce and we have a season where we don't win anything because we know we're in capable hands and we go again. So don't panic. It could be worse. You could have been pinning all your hopes on a shake and that shake turns around and says, I'm not buying your football club and you could be left in the shit hole. Do you know? Shake Jasim over the road. <clears throat> he took one look at them toilets, piss running down the stairs and thought, I can't even go for a piss, man. My sandals are going to get piss wet through here. My robes are going to be dripping in urine. What kind of an establishment is this? And they want me to pay six billion, seven billion for this. Nah. And then they want me to spend another one billion on the training ground. Because the training ground, that cliff and all that, and Carrington looks like fucking a youth centre. You know what I mean? I've got a friend of mine's kids that play at United. And if you want to watch your kid on the side of the pitch at the cliff, you have to go and get a chair from the canteen. So, yeah, true story. So get a chair from the canteen and put it at the side of the pitch. So, anyway, this is the life in these top football clubs when you're these biggest teams in the world. And, you know, it's really fucking, you know, it's good over there. But when you're like us in the shadow, you've got £250 million training grounds and that best academy in the world. You know, it's not good in the shadow, but at least you can fucking sit down and watch your kids not get a chair from the canteen and your sandals ain't going to be covered in piss when you go to the stadium, innit? 
But anyway, people, enough of that, enough of that. I want to see positivity now. I want to see us all back on the same path. Manchester City, Brighton, all pulled together. South stand. Let's have it. You know what I mean? Let's get behind the boys. Get behind them and let's get this win. Let's get this win and we can put these last couple of results behind us and we move forward. We've got a big week coming up. We've got young boys in the Champions League and we've got Manchester United. Young boys. I've got a ticket for young boys. I'm, I'm, I can't lie. I've not been too well. I don't feel 100%. If I go to young boys, I'm going to drain the life out of me. I've got Derby week coming up. I'm doing the Saturday social next Saturday live on Sky Sports in the morning, which is a big, big show. Anyone will tell you Saturday social Sky Sports one is a big show. I'm going to do that. So the odds of me flying out to uh, young boys on the on Tuesday, coming back Thursday, going to London Friday, doing the show Saturday, then doing the Derby Sunday. This is exactly what I'm trying to avoid. You know what I mean? Um, I tried to go to every game like last season, but financially it's draining emotionally it's draining and health wise it's draining you know what i mean i've got other businesses i am involved in i've got other things i have to make decisions on and, and this season i've got to be a little bit more careful when i come to europe that i can't just fly out and go all around the world you know what i mean um i've done that and it's you know it can get a bit strenuous at home with the family and the kids and that you know your daughter's ringing you when you're away are you away again dad uh, when are you coming back, Dad, and all that? It's hard, you know what I mean? It's hard. It pulls on your strings. Anyone that works away from home from the family will know that. So I'm not going to go young boys, I don't think. I'm going to do Belgrade. Uh, I'll do the later rounds. I will be at United. I will be at Chelsea. I will be at all the domestic games. But, you know, just got to take it easy a little bit, man. My health is suffering a little bit. Not feeling 100%. But... I'm hoping Pep has learned a few things on the break. I'm hoping he's watched a few of the videos and he's realised where we're going wrong. I hope he's come up with something in that uh, brain of his where we go again. Um, and yeah, there's not a lot else to say, Blues. We've just got to make sure we get on it. Um, someone was asking me the other day about January. Do you think City will go and, and, and strengthen or, or sell anyone? I mean, looking at... Calvin Phillips' statement this week saying that if he wants to play in the Euros, he needs to play. Looking at that statement, looking at his game time, can I see Calvin leaving in January? Yeah, I think so. And uh, I believe that Paqueta, the betting scandal around him at West Ham, is now dead. Uh, ideally for me, I'd love to go and get Paqueta. I'd love to see Calvin Phillips maybe go out there and start playing again. Obviously, we know what we think of Calvin. It's not worked out. But only time will tell. Only time will tell. You know what I mean? It's early days. Not to panic. Um, Kevin De Bruyne. You know, it's people talking about Rodri. Kevin De Bruyne has been a massive miss. I do believe when we get him back, it'll give everybody a boost all around the club. But one thing for certain, we've got to make sure we don't rush Kevin back. He's getting older now. These little niggly injuries are starting to creep into his career. We need to make sure we manage him well and we don't overplay him. Do you know what I mean? We've got to not overplay him. And then looking at the De Bruyne situation from 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 a from afar, there's got to be somebody to step into that role soon. You know what I mean? We've seen it with all the players at Sitter. We like to get somebody in early as a replacement. Phil Foden playing in the centre for me. I like to see him there, but I don't think he's doing it. I do believe on that wide right, Phil is better. I, I'd rather Pep just saying, you're not playing central, you're playing wide right. You're a wide right man. That's where I want you, in my opinion. Jack Grealish would be the one for the 10 role for me, the central in the midfield. That's the person I would like to see play in that Kevin De Bruyne role. I've said it a while. You could put Doku out on the left. You could put Bernardo on the right. You could put Foden on the left. You could play Grealish in the middle. I just think that gives us a great option. The reason why Pep don't play him there, I don't know. Do I know that Jack would love to play there? I believe he would, but it is what it is. But anyway, people, match prediction for the game. I'm going to say it's going to be tight, but I think City will get the job done. I think we'll get the job done 2-0. It might be 1-0 late and then we get another one and ease the pressure. I want to see a clean sheet. I want to see three points and I want to see Manchester City performance where we're all raving about it again. Plenty of movement. 
plenty of chances, plenty of action in the final third. That is what I want this weekend. Um, been offered to go in a box this weekend, believe it or not. You know I don't go in these boxes often. Well, I've never been in one, to be honest, at the Etihad. Um, Asahi Super Dry want me to go in a box and do something with their 0% lager. So I might do that. I might do. I might just nip in there, have a bit of prawn sandwich. You know what I mean? Um, but we'll see. But I'll be there anyway, 100%. I'm at the game. And before you all start saying, oh, Big Steve's changed. He's going in the uh, the box and all that. Listen, the amount of boxes and corporate stuff I turned down is ridiculous. But because I'm feeling a bit poorly, because it's getting a bit cold, the Big Steve's getting a bit old, I'm thinking, ooh, nice warm box, bit of beef with some veg, couple of acai super dry not percents. It's starting to sound good, that. You know what I mean? You can tell how rough I am. I'm not even shaved. Look, look at the state of me, man. I look like I've been dragged out of a fucking, uh, out of a doorway on Market Street. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, listen, people, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to my channel. Please keep spreading the word. Leave a comment below. Let me know what score you think it's going to be, and I'll get back to all the comments. And all I'm going to say is, come on, City. Let's go. Big week coming up. Get Brighton dealt with. Move on to young boys. And then we've got the Swamp Dwellers next week. Come on, City.